I'm Margot Pilatus. Welcome to Study English IELTS Preparation. Today we have a story about new technologies in medicine. We're going to look at linking in spoken English and then we'll talk about the word there. Let's listen to Dr. Stuart Stapleton talk about how he treats patients in other locations using computers and cameras. At the Blue Mountains end, there are four cameras. There's one which stands roughly where I would stand as the team leader in a resuscitation that gets the overview of the room and the patient and the environment. There's another camera that's located above the patient's bed. There's also a camera that lets us look at things like x-rays, cardiographs, um, blood pressure charts and the like. And there's a final camera which is actually a mobile camera which can also be head mounted. So for example if one of the staff up there needs to perform a procedure which they may have done maybe once or twice, then someone who's got a lot more experience can be at this end and guide them through the process. Okay, thank you. To speak English fluently and sound like a native speaker, it's important to link some words together. Knowing how native speakers link their words together will also make it easier to understand spoken English. Sometimes it may be difficult to know where one word ends and the next one begins. For example, healthy ear sounds the same as healthy ear. When healthy is linked together with ear, a y sound is added. So healthy ear and healthy ear have the same pronunciation shown phonetically like this, healthy ear healthy year. Normally, the context of the sentence would give you the meaning. Listen to Dr Stapleton talking about a mobile camera that can view x-rays or cardiographs. Listen to how Dr Stapleton links his words, but in particular, listen for the y linking sound. And there's a final camera which is actually a mobile camera which can also be head mounted. So for example if one of the staff up there needs to perform a procedure which they may have done maybe once or twice, then someone who's got a lot more experience can be at this end and guide them through the process. Dr Stapleton, like most native speakers, speaks quickly. Listen to how he says the phrase, which is actually a mobile camera. And there's a final camera which is actually a mobile camera. Dr. Stapleton says, actually, ah, uh, like this, actually, ah. Uh. To make your speech flow as smoothly as Dr. Stapleton's, it's important to focus on the last sound of a word and the first sound of the next, and then link the words together. There are different types of linking in English. This is linking type one, vowel plus y plus vowel. Actually ends in an E vowel sound and the next word begins with a a uh, schwa sound. Linking these words together we have actually a. Uh. Listen once again to Dr Stapleton. See if you can spot another example of y linking. Then someone who's got a lot more experience can be at this end and guide them through the process. Dr Stapleton says be at be at. B ends with the vowel sound E and at begins with vowel A. Linking these words together with the Y sound, we have be at. Let's listen again. This time, listen to how these two words are linked. What sound does Dr. Stapleton use to link the two words? There's also a camera that lets us look at things like x-rays, cardiographs, um, blood pressure charts and the like. He says there's also a camera. Did you hear a what sound? There's also a camera. We sometimes use a what sound to link between vowels. Also a, also a. This is linking type two. Vowel plus W plus vowel. Knowing when to use y and when to use w depends on the end vowel of the first word. High front vowels link with the y sound. High front vowels 
are e, i, a, oi. The sounds that are produced with the highest part of the tongue and close to the front of the mouth. For example, c, me, my, i, way, say, boy, toy. High back vowels link with the w sound. High back vowels are u, ow, and o. Sounds that are produced with the highest part of the tongue but close to the back of the mouth. For example, who, to, how, now, go, slow. Look at the sentence. Have you ever been overseas? Have you ever been overseas? Notice you ever. You ends with u, a high back vowel. So it links with linking type two, the w sound. It becomes you ever. Now let's consider another aspect of Dr. Stapleton's interview. He uses the word there in different ways. Here's the clip again. Listen for there. There are four cameras. There's one which stands roughly where I would stand as a team leader in a resuscitation that gets the overview of the room and the patient and the environment. There's another camera that's located above the patient's bed. Dr. Stapleton uses there to talk about the position of the cameras. He says things like, there are four cameras, there's one which stands, there's another camera. In these expressions, there is used as an introductory subject. It's used when we want to say something exists somewhere. There is not the subject, but rather an empty word that fills the position where the subject is usually found. It doesn't contribute meaning. It's used because the sentence would be grammatically incorrect without it. The real subject follows the verb. There are four cameras. Notice that the verb form of the introductory subject agrees with the real subject. The real subject is plural, four cameras. So he uses the plural form of the verb to be, there are. So we have, there are four cameras, but there is another camera. Now here's another use of there. So for example, if one of the staff up there needs to perform a procedure, which they may have done maybe once or twice, then someone who's got a lot more experience can be at this end and guide them through the process. In this example, Dr. Stapleton says, one of the staff up there needs to perform a procedure. There is used as an adverb to mean in that place. So there can be used as an introductory subject or as an adverb of place. Listen to Dr Stapleton in this clip and see if you can identify which way he uses there. There's also a camera that lets us look at things like x-rays, cardiographs, um, blood pressure charts and the like. And there's a final camera, which is actually a mobile camera, which can also be head mounted. He says, there's also a camera and there's a final camera. These are examples of introductory subjects. So today we've looked at two different linking types in spoken English using y and w. And we've talked about there being used as an introductory subject and as an adverb. And you can get more practice by going to our Study English website. You can read the transcript and check the study notes. And there you have it. I'll see you next time on Study English. Bye bye.